Hello and welcome back to another edition of Civil Discussion on GNET TV. I'm Andrew McKeever, the News Director at GNET TV's News Project. It's a pleasure to have you with us today on Thursday, February 29th. Happy Leap Year. Uh, we're here today uh, with my co-host, Don Keelan. Don, great to have you with us. Good to be back. And we have a special show today I think you're all going to find very interesting. We have with us today two special guests. Jim Ramsey is the chair of the Bennington County Democratic Party. And Carol DuPont is the chair of the Bennington County Republican Party. So I think we're going to have an interesting discussion, uh, civilly, I'm sure, uh, about, well, political dialogue and whatever else may come up. You never know what might happen on civil discussion. So, Don, I, I guess I'll turn it over, the mic over to you for a quick second and uh, have you get us started here with the first question. Well, let me ask our guests, uh, and welcome to the show, and thank you for, uh, both for being here today. Uh, let, me, let me ask the first question, uh, in that you're both the chairs of the, of, of the parties for the county. <clears throat> How do you see the county uh, doing uh, uh, as, we, as we sit here today? How is Bennington County doing? Uh, uh, financially, physically, socially, and what have you. I'll start with, uh, with Jim. Um, I would say uh, the county, um, it's sort of coming out of, uh, you know, this uh, COVID definitely did had an impact on the county uh, in terms of there's, we saw an influx of folks from out of state. Some have stayed, uh, some have uh, have not. Um, I'm not sure all our communities are ready to, you know, absorb them. Um, I would say that a lot of uh, uh, there's a lot of parts of the county that uh, have challenges um, that uh, that each community is trying to work through. Um, there's a, a lot of things that need to get better in our county. Um, you know, we, we uh, seem to. I guess probably the, one of the biggest things is how how do we work in our communities to to move forward and what what does progress look like and what do the communities want their Bennington to be and their towns to be um, and um, I'll, 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 st I'll stop there but as a side, it's so, some over overview of how I you know things uh, today in the county. Carol how, how do you feel the county is uh, and you've been here a while uh, I've been here a while. I really, uh, I know Manchester, Arlington. I know District 4. I know some of Bennington. But it's difficult to go down further in the county. Uh, I've been down there a few times, but they're not as responsive as the people up here, or maybe there's less population or whatever. I don't really think it's changed that much. I see it becoming uh, more suburban. Uh, that takes away not all of it, but Manchester is growing and it's changing. And I don't know. I think there's a lot of problems. I think there's a lot of drug problems. And I think there'll probably be more because I know there's something slated now that the legislature is putting through. And I th they, they're putting out two drug treatment centers in the state of Vermont. I, I, my guess is one will go to Burlington, one will go to Bennington. It's a guess. But these are places where people can come and shoot up. Okay? It's not, it's, this is a place where they feel that people are shooting up too much and killing themselves off. This is a place where you can come and shoot up and they'll be there to help you and bring you back if you overdo it. So that's where we are. Which is referring to, uh, I, I believe, the injection sites. Yes. Yeah. Uh, that's that's before the legislature right now. I believe the House may have passed that, but the Senate's taking it up. Uh, but uh, the uh, uh, what, what, what I'm thinking of is the the issues that we've had in the past are still here with us today. Uh, I'm thinking more of housing. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I constantly hear the housing issue. I constantly hear, uh, you know, we you, know, the, you you alluded to a bit, but it's the the uh, the uh, the, uh, the drug issue, uh, uh, and, uh, and 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 another one is the lack of work uh, the lack of a workforce, the lack of uh, many businesses aren't being able to obtain workers, uh, and are, are we are we kicking the can down the road, uh, because it's you know if we if we had this interview 
five years ago, ten years ago, we had these same issues. And yet they're still here with us today. So I'll go back to Jim. No, I, I agree. Housing definitely, is, as you know, uh, is, is, a, is a big issue. Um, it's a complex one. Um, there's many uh, elements and parts to it. And, uh, you know, I think, you know, each community has to look at how, how they're going to go out and solve these things. And it takes the right kind of, I would say, leaders and leadership to, to go, go after and do that. Uh, and also communities have to be receptive to want to have housing, additional housing come in, because we need the housing to support the, you know, the local economies, the local businesses, and the local infrastructure. Uh, once we can, if we get our people moving in the right direction together on that, well, we might get somewhere. But it doesn't seem that has all lined up yet. Carol, you want to? Yeah, I would say basically on housing, your big issue there is 250. And they better get somebody. It's become so expensive with everything that 250 is demanding is done to building a house. It's, it, there's no such thing as low-cost housing. And I think that's one thing people have to really tune into. I, uh, it's, I think it's, uh, it's all tied together. If you don't have jobs that pay good wages, a lot of the jobs in Vermont are low-paying wages. And therefore, the people can't afford the housing. And if you don't allow business to come in, which Vermont is not happy about business coming in, it's a difficult situation. I was going to ask uh, both of you, um, do you feel it's, uh, possible, it's possible, uh, kind of on the local level here in Bennington County, and then uh, we'll take that up to the state and maybe national levels as well, uh, for Republicans and Democrats to work together on some of these issues and, and maybe other issues that may come along. Is it, is it, is it easier at this level to kind of have conversations with political counterparts from the other sides? Uh, and, and does that, and, and if so, why, does it get more difficult the farther up the food chain you go to Montpelier or Washington or, or beyond? I'll let you throw, throw that. All right, first. very good. Thank you. Um, certainly, uh, at local level, um, it, it, it's hard to um, call everything a Democrat or Republican issue. Um, it's um, uh, you know the, I, I don't really see those are um, partisanship necessarily plays a role in all that. It's really getting people together who uh, are willing to may have different points of view on a topic. Um, but we're willing to work together uh, to try to solve it. Um, um, you know, as you, as you go up the food chain, um, you know, that's a different story. But, you know, we're, I'm, I'm here in Bennington County, um, which is certainly enough to keep me busy here. So I'll, I'll let, um, you may have more experience at the state level than I do. But, uh, but I'd say here there's, there's certainly encouraging to see people work uh, together, uh, and I'll call it a nonpartisan kind of way. I guess I'm seeing a different thing. I don't think people are working together. Basically, there are very few Republicans up in Mount Pelier. So the policies putting, put it, being put out are owned by the Democrats. They're not owned by the Republicans. So I think uh, we do have a little bit of, of a different view on this. Uh, as far as working together on the state level or whatever, well, the state level would be Mount Pelier. And uh, from the people I know that are up there, I don't know if they're listened to too much. Do you feel the, the dialogue, let's, let's, well, we'll, we can start at the Montpelier level and continue with that. Do um, you feel like there's just, you know, kind of a level of division that uh, kind of precludes good, good communication and just sort of exchanges of ideas and perspectives? And that's what slows things down, like, you know, Act 250 is a great example of an issue that's been, been around been for, there a for a long time. time. Uh, I recall going to an event in Manchester about, gosh, seven or eight years ago now at this point, mm -hmm. where it was a big conversation about how Changing. to revise Act 250, yeah. which was first passed in, what, 1970 or 71, and was getting to be 50 years old. And it just seemed like it was just impossible for, for both sides to kind of come to a consensus around what needed to be changed on that. and. Uh, I don't know if that's just sort of a, you know, one one example among many, or that's kind of a, a, a the shining star of how difficult it is 
but I, I do you really feel like it's really that hard for well that, if you look at the numbers just look at the numbers of people up there that are Democrats in the House versus what the Republicans have in the Senate uh, so I don't think they're listened to I think I just know the Republicans some of them find it very difficult they're not listened to or they there's no chance to say anything I mean their outvote Scott has been his veto has been overrun so many times this year it's been unreal let, let me let me interject uh, I, I think what's changed in Montpelier uh, from when uh, going back a few years now from <clears throat> and I've been here now almost 40 years uh, uh, and, uh, and and I I actually ran Mary Ann Carlson's, uh, she was a senator from Dutch, uh, from uh, uh, Bennington County in 1988, 90, and 92. And a Democrat. I wasn't up here six weeks and she asked me to run her campaign. She was a Democrat. Uh, she knew I was a Republican. And, uh, but uh, I said, look, if you stay out of national politics, I'll be more than happy to help you. Help you. Because the, 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 the legislature was really interested in, let's get things done for the state, regardless of which party you were in. And, uh, uh, and, uh, and, and there was, a, there was a, a great working relationship among the, among the members. What's happened today, uh, and, I've, and I've heard this from uh, our representatives and, and so forth, you have another party up there, the Progressive Party, and, and, they, and they hold a lot, they carry a lot of a weight up there, and they have a lot of sway. Uh, and when it comes to the veto, that's, you know, they, they, uh, if a bill's going to be vetoed, it, or, or the governor's um, right. veto's going to be over, overridden, it's got, they, need the, they need the progressive party, right? So they, they, they have a, a great deal of influence. As they, you know, it was in Burlington, now it's over in, in Montpelier, and, and a few other communities. So it's a, it's a whole other aspect that's coming in here. Uh, that we haven't seen before, uh, because the Democrats and the Republicans, many years ago, worked together. Uh, uh, and, but um, but you're right, Carol's right. I mean, it's uh, it's very lopsided right now. But wouldn't well, you say most of the people up there are progressives? They're not Democrats anymore. No, they're not. They're, I, I I can't uh, uh, say that most of them are. No, I'm, no. I'm not most no. most of them. Well, are. No. They, they, what's happened is they got they have a. You know, they're, they're, and in a way, it's, it's very much like what's going on in, uh, uh, in Israel. Uh, there's, a, there's a part of the party, uh, or the uh, Knesset, that's controlled by a group, right? Uh, that has, the, 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 that can, can, can sway which way a vote goes. Uh, and that's what happen, that's what's happening in Montpelier. Uh, We're getting into complicated territory here very quickly. But I was going to say, Carol, uh, I mean, uh, I, I lived in Vermont back in the in the '60s and '70s, and back then uh, the Republicans ran the show in the legislature. I mean, by a wide margin. I mean, Vermont was a Republican state from the what the Civil War on until what 1962 is when uh, is when the first Democrat governor uh, Phil Hoff was elected. Uh, it was a hundred years, and uh, and uh, I. You know, then what the legislature happened? Was a, a solid. So I, you know, I guess my point being that I, I don't know how how different it may be now compared to then or if, if if the communication was kind of more civil and, and more like uh, people could listen to the other side but then it was still a case where the numbers were have you found have you found conversation here uncivil no no i know so i i'm surprised that uh you know i have theories on this and my theories are kind of black uh this has been the last two, three years, almost four. They don't want you to talk anymore. If you disagree with somebody, you're supposed to keep your mouth shut and let them say what they want to say. They don't like conversation. Again, when people get used to only reading their mail off their phone, they don't really expect any conversation, and that's a, a, almost a lost art. And that's what ha is happening with children. It's happening... It's a, it's a very bad time, actually. And communications have a lot to do with it. And uh, we'll see what happens. Are you finding that to be the case? Uh, no. No, I, I, I don't really recognize what you're referring to. I know our, like our, you mentioned the, 
state reps here in in uh, uh, in this district are are quite communicative on many levels and uh, are out there quite a bit and are quite frequently in touch with with everyone. So oh, I'm not, I don't find that, that again. We're talking about face to face communications. Yes. Yeah. Okay, that's different. And basically, it'd be very nice if we could communicate as well, but we don't have the opportunity to use the newspapers like the Democrats do. We send what, what? letters in and they're not received, okay? We do try to get things in the newspaper and they're not put in the newspaper. So I think we're dealing with two different items. For example, can you share, can you be more specific? On what? On, on the newspaper. Well, we well, just what, have different people that write letters, I mean, writing letters in or trying to cover events. <sighs> Uh, basically, the only time I dealt with you was when I was trying to get uh, Kathleen James and Seth mm -hmm. to debate some mm -hmm. of my people mm -hmm. at the library. Mm -hmm. Okay? That never worked out. They never wanted to quite do it. No, that's not true. Well, what happened? Well, you, you, you pulled out. We I were pulled out because I waited so long and I couldn't. Wow. When I pulled out, I had brought down every man that was running for office in the state yeah. of Vermont. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. Uh, but I no, waited. You, three, you and I were communicating. Three and a half, four weeks. You and I were communicating. Yes. And then I was getting back to you, and next thing I know, you had some other speaker come down uh, to speak, and that was the end of it. You you pulled out. So um, I, had, was, I had I, ten other speakers we come were. down to speak. Well, oh, good. Yeah. But you know, it wasn't that we they were not interested in debating. Oh so, really? Yeah. Well, would they be interested in debating now? I'd love to do it. Well, um, we'll we'll see that you know who comes forward as candidates this year. So, you know. Oh. But you're willing to have a debate. I think um, in I terms mean, of having debates, you know, you have to have, uh, uh, you, know, you know, guidelines on, on, on what the rules are and that sort of thing. So another part we didn't get to, Caroline didn't get to, was, okay, we're going to have a debate. Who's going to moderate it? What, what the rules are and, and what kind, you know, what, how, how do you develop the questions that are going to be asked and those kind of things. So there has to be some sort of decorum on how, how you uh, construct those kind of things. And we didn't get to that. Uh, we never got that far along. But we, w we would have and it would have happened. Well, we'll do it this year. That would be a lovely thing. You can put all the rules together. You can do whatever you want to do. No, I, I would not put all the rules together because I, I, I believe no it should be. No, no, no. Yeah, would not. Would. Uh, yeah, you would. No. I mean, I, I, I no, no. <coughs> yeah. they want to be. You need an independent party. There should be independent um, organization. We would or, get one of these gentlemen to do it. Okay. Well, a Andrew and I have moderated debates in the past. Or, yeah. I, when I say debates, uh, when political candidates come together uh, or from different parties, we've done that uh, numerous times. Uh, yeah, once uh, or twice, anyway. They're, they're not really, in my opinion, a debate in the sense no, of... No, no, they don't. I mean, they just they're, 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 answer they're, questions. It gets the public to meet the candidates from, from the party, and uh, it gives them an opportunity. Uh, I'd like to go back to the, the thing about the press. Can you share that a little bit more with us? Uh, your, your, your opinions are not getting into the press? Well, they're not so much opinions. They're uh, things that are going on. There are letters that are written, you know. I've got an awful lot of bright people I work with, and they write wonderful letters. And we send them in, and they're not published. And we have a little bit better luck with Bennington. The Journal? The Manchester Journal is what I'm talking about primarily. They're both, and Bennington is owned by the same person as Manchester, but we have a little bit better luck in Bennington. And now I have a very good man, Clark Adams, running He's the chair of Bennington, and he's running for the select board there. Uh, so we'll see what we do. Um, well, he was the editor of the paper, so I mean. Uh, oh, but this, yeah, well, but this, I'm, I'm not talking. Ago. Yeah, I'm not talk, I'm talking. <laughs> I mean, uh, you know, I'm talking the last five or six years. I mean, I, I I've been a writer for the for the uh, a columnist for the. Oh, I know. For the. Uh, Banner in the journal for over tw oh, it's now over twenty years, and uh, over six hundred columns have gotten into the paper, and I do it every, I do it every other week. Uh, no, I really and not only for that, but it goes into uh, both a uh, quote liberal organization, the Vermont Digger, and it goes into the uh, Vermont uh, uh, Daily Chronicle, which is, is sort of on the Republican side. Uh, now, when we do better in the Daily Chronicle, a lot of the letters we can't get published down here, they publish up there, yeah. or the articles we write. Yeah. 
I, I think part of the, I mean, I don't want to defend the papers. I'm not, it's not my job. But the thing is, I think the, part of the problem today as, that's changed from when Andrew was the editor of the journal and, and even before that, there's, there are less pages being printed. Well, that's true. And there's less advertising. You know, and therefore, they, they, can, they can only publish so much. You're not the only organization that's not getting um, uh, uh, news items out. It's a, big, it's a big problem for the whole community. Uh, and the, uh, the other source, the news guide, has gotten much thinner. And, and therefore, there are less pages yeah. because there's less ads. And there's less ads because we don't have the, the commercial operation or the retail operation we once had up here. So, uh. And it's a big problem statewide. I mean, uh, just some of the reports will indicate that there's, you know, what they would call uh, Vermont a, uh, a news desert in terms of the decline in, in news circulation from, I got one statistic from 04 to 2019, went down over 38%. The decline of people working in the industry, and so where people get their news uh, from traditional sources, now they're looking to you know other social media, um, other other places to get their news, which may be not as reliable. So and and uh, these are you know a lot of times complex issues, and you can't um, are uh, not having adequate you know. Uh, traditional news coverage to get into depth in some of these issues is, is a problem because be, mm -hmm. people may not get the full understanding and breadth of, 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 of an issue that's going on. Yeah, I, I, that's, that's one of my f major concerns uh, is, is, uh, is the decline of local papers, local media, uh, because, uh, you know, I remember back uh, when you know, every select board meeting in Bennington or Manchester would get covered, and and uh, and they just don't have the staff to do the same yeah. kind of level of work anymore. And that's largely because of the collapse of classified advertising in particular, uh, and uh, and just advertising in general. And uh, and I think it's probably fair to say the failure of the of the media uh, industry as a whole to adjust to the arrival of the internet and, and, and kind of kind of look around the corner and see where that was all going. That's, that's still the case now. We're seeing uh, uh, newsrooms hollowed out almost weekly, it's, and especially in small, small towns like Bennington and Manchester, uh, places like that. Do, do I get to ask a question? May I pose a question Absolutely. to you, gentlemen? So are you familiar with, uh, I know the University of Vermont has something called the Center for Community News. Mm -hmm. Are you familiar with what they're up to? Yep. And uh, as I understand what that is, that's where um, students are, uh, through, the, you, through the college, is going out and providing some reporting on news and, and that sort of thing. What, what do you guys think of that? I feel like I'm, you want me to take that one first? Yeah. I think it's great. Would that be a possible? No, oh, yeah, we've yeah. we've had a couple of their people actually, uh, you know, uh, on the show um, by Zoom actually most of the time, and it's been a couple of years now. But uh, and we did, but actually we just did have a, a program with uh, Big Better Angels on. Didn't we have them, and they were part of that. They were the Braver Angels. The Braver. Yeah. Um, well, that they're a little bit different. Uh, they are different. But, uh, yeah. I think it would be good to talk about them in a minute, uh, yeah. perhaps. But, but no, um, we we did have actually one one young reporter who's working for uh, uh, Vermont Public, uh, and also I think writing for uh, she's with Vermont Public. Um, on. But yeah, I know. I think I think anything that encourages younger folks to get into uh, journalism and uh, you know uh, news media is, is is great because I I find myself thinking, boy. It's going to be awfully hard to attract young talent into that uh, as we go forward if the trends of the moment continue. Yeah, I I, um, uh, I remember watching I think on PBS on one of the news channels something called the uh, the American uh, News Project where they're actually uh, it's a philanthrop philanthropic uh, endeavor where. Um, they're saying that it's so vital to our democracy and, uh, and to our country, uh, the new indus news industry needs, needs to be viewed differently, and can we raise money to help support and keep some of these uh, newspapers going so that they don't continue the downward spiral that they're in now? Well, we're working with uh, <coughs> the Digger. I've done a lot of work with the Digger. I go way back to when they were founded and uh, with uh, Ann Galloway and, uh, and so forth. But uh, because I still write for them, uh, I'm trying to get them to come down here and, and cover the, our area. 
uh, they uh, they don't have <clears throat> they don't have any assigned reporters. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me, down here in Bennington County. Uh, 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 Tiffany Tan, I believe, is the only one. She's up in uh, Rutland, and uh, okay. uh, but it's a money thing. I, uh, uh, the same thing with the banner in the journal. It's a money thing. They they need to get money to pay these people to come there and report the news. The, the digger would be down here if uh, if uh, we we could provide them with a uh, uh, a subsidy that they can subsidize their their reporting uh, in Bennington County. Unfortunately, right now, everything wants to be subsidized. Yeah. I have never been solicited in my whole life for as much money as I have this year. Huh. It's uh, every organization needs money. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, you have 6,800 nonprofits in Vermont, so. Well, uh, you there you that. go. Yeah. And that, yeah. that tells you something. Yeah. Uh, the, uh, I want to get back to the question I was asking before. Uh, uh, as leaders of the party for the for the county, when you meet with your colleagues from other counties, specific, uh, specifically Chittenden County, uh, do you do you find out that we're being shortchanged down here and we're not getting the attention from the the leaders of the legislature uh, the, uh, and the leaders of government that other areas are getting? Uh, was it Dick Sears? coined a phrase several years ago, well, more than several years ago, uh, we're the forgotten kingdom. <laughs> Remember the... Uh, but that may not be all bad. You know, I did have uh, the head of the Republican Party down here last week. I had Rob Roper down here last week. I had Gerald Malloy down here the week before. So it's not like <clears throat> they're not coming down. They'll come down anytime I ask them. I can get everybody I want down here. But... Uh, are you talking on a money basis? That you, why you were forgotten because they're not giving us more money or more attention? I don't know. The latter. Attention. Uh, I don't know what they could. I mean, again, I've got. I don't know if I want a lot of attention. Huh. I don't know what they're doing that. <clears throat> I don't know what's going on in the legislature up there. Let's say I haven't got enough Republicans there to help us out. I mean, what's going on is done now by the Democrats. It's their policies. I don't know to bring the Republicans down. That's what you're talking about? Kevin? Not necessarily, but just to bring the state's attention to Bennington County, uh, uh, where we have already, I mean, the four, le the four legislators, uh, well, we send more than four, uh, uh, up to Bennington, up to Montpelier. Uh, I don't think we get, my, my personal, and that's why I don't want to, I want to hear from you folks, uh, that, that we're getting the attention down here. Uh, but I want to hear from you. So uh, what you said, I have never heard of, where um, uh, Chittenden County is getting more attention than, than we are. We're also, what, Chittenden County is, what, 165,000 people, and we're 36,000 people. So, you know, there's a relative size factor there when you, when you want to compare the two counties. Uh, in terms of uh, leadership and the state and the legislature and so forth, there is, uh, we, they're here uh, frequently, uh, a lot. Um, uh, so we see them. There's a lot of access and visibility to them. Some of the, our members here are, are leaders in, in Montpelier. Um, our, you know, one of our, we have a, a native of, of Manchester who's an attorney general. So there's a lot of, uh, um, you know, representation and connection, uh, uh, you know, um, but, but at the state level. I wonder if I could just is jump that, in. Is that addressing your question though? Sure. It, but I, I want to follow up with, yeah. you, with yeah. just one area where that's not the case. Okay. With all, even the, notwithstanding all the leadership that you're talking about, yeah. including Dick Sears and yeah. and uh, and, uh, and uh, what's her name, uh, Kathleen. Kathleen James yeah. is the is the yeah. uh, is the whip, right? The yeah. uh, assistant uh, majority leader. Yeah. Yes. Well, go ahead. I, I don't want to. Oh well, I, <laughs> I what, what I was going to do was to try to try to pivot this conversation a little bit uh, more broadly here, and I guess ask both of you uh, if, if you thought it was important. Uh, and necessary, and uh, you know, kind of uh, maybe hearkening back to an earlier time when to to listen to each other's side of the story, uh, or version of events, or understanding of issues, and 
you know, potential solutions to problems to gain a better understanding. I mean, is that is that something that both of you feel is uh, either missing from the political dialogue of the moment, uh, whether it's at the, here at the county level or at the state level? Uh, and if so, is that okay? Or, or should we be trying to say, well, it's not just a matter of jamming through what I want to do, but it's important to kind of hear what uh, a, a counter view would be to understand the issue better maybe, or how we might go about crafting a solution that is more effective. I just think, I just think there's a basic difference in uh, mentality maybe. Uh, the Democratic Party seems to want to spend a great deal of money. They seem to want to underwrite things that are going to cost the taxpayers more money in the state of Vermont. This is a poor state. We're ranked, uh, except it's really funny, if this is true, I've read that we're the fourth most expensive state to live in in the country. Okay? That, that really blows my mind. The fourth most expensive state to live in in the country. And, and who, education. Who, how do we, what is a, who, who said that or whatever? I don't know. I picked that up and I don't know where I read it. I, I don't know if it was in the Epic Times or, uh, or Wall Street Journal or someplace. But anyhow, um, I just think they, they, I think their thinking is very, I think they're thinking, they think they're good. It's just like underwriting the school lunch program now. For even the people that have a great deal of money, they're paying for their children to have a free lunch so they don't make some child that's family can't afford lunch feel bad. I mean, to my way of thinking, I grew up, I guess, in a whole different era. Things were different. It wasn't, you were expected when you were younger to, you know, do what you had to do. Here, they're, they're trying to make people feel better and they're making other people pay for it. I mean, that's going to be a $20 million project to feed every child that goes to school. And I wonder how much many of them eat what they're given. They may not like what the school is serving. So it could be a big waste. I don't know. But, but there are different programs. To kind of listen to you know, solutions that may not be kind of, you know, the solutions are usually take. I mean, to listen to them, I read about them after they're done. You know, that when it comes out and it's been done or up for a possible vote, that's when I find out about it. Well, let's go back to your question. First of all, I'm not, to what you just went through, I'm not a, a sp spokesperson for the state legislatures. Uh, and, and so, the, the, you know, you can have them come in and talk about you know, the counterpoint to what, what you just raised. But to your point about, um, uh, you know, um, um, communicating with others and how we communicate to others from a, a Bennington County Democratic Party standpoint, let me just say what we try to do. So um, what we've been trying to do, and we the uh, last couple of years we've been trying to instill new um, involvement and activity in the county, is to get because uh, we were uh, you go back a couple of years ago we did not have too many towns organized in in the in the county um, and we've been working at that and what we try to do is bring the towns together uh, form committees and get them to get involved and grow and then get involved in their, in their own committees to address the problems they have so we're um, not so much focused on. Montpelier, we're focused on our local communities, and the the phone call that goes to the top of my list um, uh, when for ben, Bennington County Democratic matters is when I get a call from a town that's not organized because we still have work to do here, and they say, "Hey, we're interested. Where is the Democratic Party? What can we do?" And I will work that person to help get a committee going. And it's been very encouraging to see when they do get, you get to one person, you get three, then you get a committee together. And it's, this takes time, but it's really bringing people together that are interested in their own communities and how they can work together. And this is not, although there were, we're the Democrats, it, we really aren't 
talking so much about this is the democratic point of view. It's like, what are the issues in the community? How can we work together with others on the local boards and commissions? So um, I kind of, although I wear the hat, it's pretty much um, a, a nonpartisan point of view on, uh, on many of these things. Now we do get involved with the state party and we have elections and you know potential debates and those kind of things but most of the work is bringing people together in the communities to see what what's what's in common and how we can address things. To put that another way I gather I mean I could I could be a member of the Democratic Party because I could support what they're doing in, in, insofar as Bennington County goes because of the issues that, that, are, that are in front of us. Uh, you know, it's when, and that's what I had shared with Mary Ann Carlson when I ran her campaign. Uh, I'll, I'll support you because the issues are, you know, they're, they're, they're common to all of us uh, that, that you're working on here in the county. <clears throat> I wanna go back to one of the points you, you, you were making earlier uh, uh, about how we are being neglected. Uh, t 10 years ago, uh, 2013 uh, years ago now, uh, I'm sorry, 12 years ago, Bennington County was going to get a major hub center to deal with uh, uh, Suboxone and uh, Methadone. It was going to be a clinic in Bennington. Governor Shumlin came down, Se Senator Sears was there, I think Brian Campion was there. It was, it was a major uh, uh, unveiling, and Bennington was going to have a major hub center for drugs, right? Uh, and, and, and it would be done in three months. It never happened. Year after year went by. And it's now being worked on, supposedly now, uh, with a, a, an out-of-state company going to set it up. This is a major uh, facility where uh, uh, right now there's over 100 people that could use this in Bennington County to get their um, uh, uh, daily um, Suboxone or Methadone. Uh, otherwise, they have to go to Rutland, they have to go to... Um, down at uh, Pittsfield, maybe, or, or North, uh, North Adams, or over to Brattleboro. Uh, uh, again, it was kicking the can down the road. We're not going to do it now. We're going to do it later. Meanwhile, several, uh, uh, I think about a dozen folks, at least it's over a dozen, have, have been overdosed and died in Bennington, in, in, in the town of Bennington. Uh, uh, plus a, a tremendous amount of over, uh, overdose situations, right? Because we don't have this clinic. And, and that's, that's what I mean by the state ignoring us. Uh, uh, and uh, there are four others in the state. And, uh, uh, and, and, and I can go down the list of the things that we've been uh, ignored by the state uh, down here, um, and, and including the Republican Party. I mean, I, the, the governor hasn't been down here in quite some time uh, to, to visit us. Uh, I've been pushing him on it. I've been working with the staff to come down here. It's just that we do not get the attention. Uh, and. Uh, uh, and, and, and we and we do pay for it. Uh, uh, the, um, the the we've had several conferences on housing, right? Uh, mm -hmm. uh, by the state, mm -hmm. come down here, right? Uh, uh, going back now five years, right? we've had them in Manchester, we've had them down here in Bennington and uh, Arlington, in Arlington, right? Uh, we still don't have the housing, right? And if you go up to Winooski, Wilson. Burlington, South Burlington, you see a, a major housing boom going on. Okay. Why housing up there and not down here? Uh, so all I'm saying is it, it, it's, it's getting to be a, a, a two different locales. Are we, getting, are we getting the attention from the, uh, I know you were saying a minute ago that you know, you're not here to defend or support, you know, take on the legislature, but they have a big role in this. And, and we do have, we, we do send some, uh, long-term people up in yeah. to, uh, to yeah. Montpelier, yeah. Yeah. come down here, and you'd think they'd carry some weight. But go ahead. I, I, uh, it's your. Sh you, you guys are here. Do you want long? I mean, do you want a lot of housing down here? Do you want housing? And they want cluster housing. They want Arlington to be really filled up with housing. You can't. Be, uh, how, how come, it's Carol? Who, <laughs> sorry, I'm sorry. Who, who is there? <laughs> That's the plan. That's the overall plan. They want the the housing to be done in clusters, in the. You support it, that? Do I know? Why not? Because if I wanted that, I would have moved someplace else. Okay? But as, okay now, okay. I, I don't. I mean, I didn't come here. I came out of La Jolla, California. Uh. 
there's lots of housing nice place. right on top of uh, each other. California. Okay. <laughs> well, that's that's where the yeah, aviation. That that's where there. the aviation. We didn't that's, have time to play golf. Uh, that was the aviation business. But anyhow, if I wanted to live in close proximity to people, I could pick a million other places in the country. Vermont is a destination area. Vermont could also kill itself off by trying to be like every place else when they have such a spectacular. Well, that's the kind of housing being built up in uh, Winooski right now, and Williston. Is it lovely? And, is it lovely what they're doing? Or is they're it doing a nice job. The, the problem here's the problem now. I, I uh, and I'm not, now I'm putting on my other hat as a developer, and I built a lot of housing around here, but thousands of houses I've heard that, yeah. south of here. I. I built Ormsby Hill. Now, now we can't build another Ormsby Hill, all right? Because not at four or five hundred dollars a square foot, you're not going to build that. Well, that's true. Okay. Now, uh, if you want a, pol a policeman, a fireman, a teacher to be here, all right? You're going to have to have a housing. If you want a doctor, you I understand you lost a doctor in Manchester because they couldn't find housing and they left. Uh, but a lot of people we lost yeah. because they couldn't find housing. Yeah. yeah. Uh, now. The only, the, the, what's only affordable right now from a developer standpoint <clears throat> uh, to build is uh, what we call uh, uh, the uh, uh, one over one type housing uh, and, and, and housing that has a lot more density where you could build seven, eight to the acre. Uh, 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 it's not going to happen. If you don't get those kinds of housing in here, you're not going to get, it. the only thing you're going to get are the are the are the, uh, the mega mansions? Uh, uh, so uh, I, I just want to add that uh, as well, a developer, it's not going to happen. And you know what? I just did a column on this. Right? Uh, in the next couple of years, we're going to lose uh, 9,500 uh, 9, patients south of Arlington, Arlington South. 9,500 9, patients are going to lose their primary care doctor. They're retiring. Well, that's true. Uh, the and we interviewed, not interview, I'm sorry, we surveyed uh, nine pra uh, seven practices, and the doctors are retiring in one to two years. And Dr. King retired in ben and Shaftesbury. I, I, I have to pull him out of it. He, he retired. 3,500 patients had to go find another doctor at some other place. Well, that's going to happen. That's happening all over the country. Well, I'm not all over the country. We're yeah, right yeah, here in, yeah. in Bennington, yeah, and that's, that's what I'm true, worried about. The, well, the other thing you ought to be worried about is we have two pensions that aren't funded. Yeah. When you want a teacher to come to a state, if the teacher's got half a brain, she's going to look at the state and see if the pension that she's going to retire to is funded. If it's not, why would you choose this state? Those are the things that somebody with some kind of business brain better be looking at, but they're not. It has to, you're running a state. That's a business. Well, they did address that, right, Andrew? Uh, they did uh, address that? The, uh, the, last the, the last two legislatures. legislatures Not as did, much as they should have. Uh, as much as they could afford. Right? Where did they, they what happened was prior, in prior years, way back, they allowed the, 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 the pension plans to go unfunded. Right? And, they, and they created a huge unfunded liability. Uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> And they recognized it when it got to four, close to four billion dollars. Uh, they said we better do something about it. And uh, so uh, the, the, there's legislation that was passed several years ago, adding 250 million dollars a year. Uh, the state now puts into the uh, to cover that unfunded portion. It's going to take a number of years, but unfortunately that came out before you and I came here. Uh, well, there's uh, other things. There's Kathleen James brought down the treasurer, I believe, of the state of Vermont. He was in the library, mm -hmm. I, I can't remember, what, two months ago or whatever. Something like that, yeah, Mike Pichuk. And Were you there? Mm-hmm. Okay, and he talked about his, the new theory in the state was to uh, take people that had low-income people and take away, what, 2% or 5% of their paycheck every time they got paid and put it into a certain depository for them that they would build up something like a 401, but if the person decided they didn't want, again, if you're living, uh, if you're living very close to the edge of just of destruction every month, and somebody takes away two percent or five percent, I can't remember if it was two percent or five percent. It was somewhere in that range, but it also was an optional plan. Yeah. you could opt in or opt out. You could opt out. You had, they no, you didn't opt in. 
You, I think it was they were going to do it for everyone, but people found it too difficult. They could opt out. Mm -hmm. I don't know if it, it went into effect or not, no, but did. this was his. This was his plan. Yeah, that was the Vermont Saves plan. Yeah. Um, well, that, that's a conversation we could probably spend an hour talking about yeah. uh, just on that because it quite it does address a serious problem where people who uh, reach retirement age and don't have adequate savings to who can't just survive on Social Security and uh, to have some kind of savings plan. I, my, my sense of it is that it makes sense to have some kind of plan for you know, ordinary working folks who may not get a pension plan through their job uh, to have at least some kind of savings to retire on when they grow. But we, we don't have a whole lot of time left, and I, I did kind of want to just kind of get back to maybe the a broader subject of uh, how how everyone can kind of listen to each other. I mean, and uh, and maybe get ideas from each other's side on on things. And and uh, one of you mentioned the Braver Angels earlier at one I, point. I, uh, and, uh, you mentioned a, Better Angels, which I, uh, they originally were called, the Braver Angels were called um, the Better Angels. I think that was uh, from Lincoln's, one of his inaugural addresses, and then they, they changed off to Better uh, Braver Angels. But yeah, they got started, yes. Yeah, I mean, I, I guess I, I'm assuming you're both familiar with the organization. We, we had one of our early shows was uh, two of the Braver or Better Angels from mm -hmm. uh, up in the St. Albans area. Right. I think, uh, uh, and then uh, we had had the back on more recently, uh, and I always thought that that was kind of an interesting model because we had the two folks. One was a Republican, one was a Democrat, and they talked about how they disagreed on issues, but uh, you know, had found a way to listen to each other and, and kind of hear what the other was saying and, and kind of get a perspective on that. And, and that uh, that just seemed like a very common sense kind of approach to me, and it seems to be one I sort of remember politics used to seem to be like back when I was uh, a lot younger, when you had uh, people like George Aiken and Everett Dirksen and uh, Mike Mansfield and people like that running the show in Congress, unlike the motley crew <laughs> who are doing things now. Uh, and I guess I just find myself wondering, is there any pathway back to that? Well, I think there's um, um, a lot of, of sentiment for that today. Um, I know the... Uh, uh, the f two former governors of Tennessee, one Bredesen, another one, they have a, they have a podcast out, and about you know that one's Democrat, one's Republican, and they're talking about issues, and, and they're what's really good is they're role modeling um, how uh, uh, different points of view, uh, people from with uh, different parties can can talk to each other and and uh, uh, in a civil kind of manner and so forth. Um, I was in Dallas last week and I had a chance to talk with uh, Chris Boyd who runs something called Think on K channel KR KRA and, and that is, the, the, you know, she was doing something with the Governors Association. So there's a lot of interest acro across the country. They do want to uh, have that. I think there's reason for hope to believe we can see that. I was involved actually. Um, Speaking of uh, Chittenden County up in Burlington, an uh, organization called um, Hula uh, formed uh, with uh, uh, the, the, the Scully family up there put together uh, with another company up there, um, uh, uh, Alex Lally from Signal Change, they formed something called Sea Change. And Sea Change twice a year has workshops on different topics and they brought in Braver Angels. And I was actually, a chance, I've been through two Braver Angel workshops where you bring in people from different points of view and they train you how to talk to, uh, how to connect with each other. And you really start with trying to find something in general and topic, uh, a general, what do you f might find in common and to get to know the other person. So if, if you get to know the other person and what they're about and what they're interested in, you then start to build a framework of trust to communicate with them, and then you can go on from there. So I think those are some, some very good things. Braver Angels are back. Carol, when you're referring to the, the debate that didn't happen uh, two years ago, I, I had reached out to the Braver Angels folks, because that's right when I was through my first workshop with them, and then went to um, uh, connected with their organization, and they have something called braver debates where they set up and they go around they were just starting off to do that so they actually are set up to, to help uh, uh organize and run um you know uh, those those sorts of uh events so uh well, we didn't get that far though so is this kind of like a woke type of operation i don't know what you mean by that 
Well, basically, I, I think woke has worked its way into organizations now where people have to be very careful about what they say to each other. They can't talk like they used to to each other uh, because they might be hurting people or saying the wrong thing. No, nothing. No, no. It, it is Just like the actually it was formed by uh, uh, I think a couple of former or, or either Republicans or former Republicans. So uh, it's uh, I really don't uh, think that's where okay. that's all about. I'm not familiar with it. Well, that's huh. not yet. So. We are going to have to wind this up fairly quickly, uh, but uh, Don, I, I, I got a feeling you had one more question you wanted to ask, and I had interrupted you at one point earlier. Well, I, I was hoping to draw on um, uh, and have um, uh, Jim tell us, you, you spent a lot of time in Washington, uh, and hopefully, uh, getting back to Andrew's point about Washington getting together with the way it was with Dirksen and so forth, I mean, well, I'm showing uh, my age with uh, and Aiken and so forth. Who? Right. <laughs> and, 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 and as I've shared with Andrew uh, very often, I was in Washington in the in the late fifties uh, when I was with the uh, the Marines at Eighth and I, and uh, we guarded. I went to Camp David a lot. Right. Was at the White House wow. and all that. And I, I remember wow. these leaders getting together. Yeah. yeah. And, and many of the different leaders would get together with Eisenhower yeah. up at Camp David, and we spent. Uh, now, I didn't meet with the leaders. I was a, a sentry. Well, you had me gone there for a while. I thought I was no, pretty no, impressed. No, right? no, no. <laughs> uh, I don't want to take any credit. I, know, I, I didn't do this. But what, what, I, what I gather now, you know, years later, well, geez, we were there for the weekend with the president, and, and he was with these leaders from different parties. And they got together. They, 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 uh, uh, they, they spent time, as they did in Montpelier years ago. The people didn't go home at, at night. Uh, and and uh, one of the things, and you talk to the, lead, the the politicians, why we can't get the, the, from uh, Montpelier to work closer together, Republicans and Democrats, they go home. Uh, they're not there. Uh, why? Because we have Interstate 89. Uh, when that was built, they're gone. And the same thing with D.C. When we had the, uh, the jets came in, uh, the, the, um, the plane uh, jets, and the highways. The legislators go home on the weekend. They're not there on, uh, and and is, why? Because they're not there to communicate. And isn't that really what the uh, uh, the you know the Braver Angels is all all about? Is communicating. Mm -hmm. right? uh, uh, and uh, uh, so I hope uh, we can have a debate or a discussion with the candidates that you will bring up uh, for um, election in the um, in the fall and. Uh, and the candidates you might bring up, uh, uh, that we'll be uh, willing to, because that's what the public needs. They need to, they need to hear a discussion, um, and and see it, yeah. <laughs> because we are going to be in for one heck of an election in the fall. I mean, uh, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Andrew and I've said it's going to be another 1968. I think but, could uh, be. Well, okay, I think uh, that's where we're going to have to leave it for today. I, 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 I'm left with the feeling we're just scratching the surface of a lot of these things. But no. uh, uh, there's so, so many issues that we could really dive into, pensions, housing, and you know, lots, lots of things. <laughs> yeah, here. we got, I got enough for another at least two more shows. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, well, well maybe. And I did too. Might be the way to go. And I'll yeah. bring mine. Yeah. 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 <laughs> okay. Yeah. Well, all right. Well, we'll have to leave it there for today, but maybe we'll have round two at some point or another. Anyway, uh, I want to thank uh, Jim Ramsey and Carol DuPont, the right. chairs of the Republican Democrat uh, County County parties for, Demo for Bennington County. I'm sure I mangled close. that pretty well. That's close enough. That's all right. Yeah. And Don, thanks again. Thank you. Um, Good to and, have you. Thank, um, thank you for thank being you with both. us. Thank you for thank making you. time. All right. And thanks to all of you, you for watching. We'll thank see you, you again the next time. All right.